pair of district losses. In 1975, Coach Wilkins was determined to get the Panthers back to state. Coach Wilkins was a great motivator. He was a great organizer and a great offensive and defensive mind. John Wilkins, was he was young at the time, but uh, a very intense, very smart coach, very dedicated. We'd run the same plays, same offenses and defenses since seventh grade, so you, you didn't have to learn any jargon. There was a little pressure on he and his staff to get something done, because this was the third year, and at that time, you know, you only had one team going to the playoffs. We came together under some incredible coaching. I think they coached very well together. Coach Wilkins really you know, had some good people underneath him. When the Panthers were on offense, it was a clinic, an offensive style that Wilkins ingrained into the junior high feeder schools to Permian. Permian had such a reputation. It's what all the small kids or little kids dreamed of. If you were in sports as a kid, you always wanted to play football at Permian. That way you could be somebody. You pull that jersey over your head, you know, you, you go in one person, and, and your head comes out another person because you're wearing that black jersey with permian across the front of it. As far as weight goes, there were many times we were 30 pounds lighter, 20, 20 pounds lighter uh, on a per man basis. But because we were conditioned so well, we could you know, run them into the ground. Quarterback Chris Howard guided Permian's offense as the once beaten Panthers cruised into the playoffs where they trounced Wichita Falls Ryder 33 to 13. But the Permian defense took over from there as a 10-7 win over Arlington Sam Houston was followed by a 14-all tie to El Paso Coronado, a game in which the Panthers advanced on penetrations, setting up a marquee matchup with Longview in the state semifinals. Russell Wheatley kicked a state record 62-yard field goal barefooted just before the half. That proved to be the difference in a 10-9 win over the favored Lobos. Uh, they were number one team in the state. Uh, they scored late to make it nine to three. We blocked the extra point and we look at each other and go, we got them. We're down nine to three, there's a couple minutes left, but we got them. We go down, score, 10-9 us, we're moving on. That was our mentality. We believed in the deal defense wins championships. It's a great game, uh, Longview had I don't know, six or seven people who went D1 football, and they had tremendous talent. So we went up to Lubbock with every expectation to win. We never lost a game in the fourth quarter. In 1975, they battled the Port Natchez Groves Indians in a game that was played at Texas Stadium in front of one of the largest crowds to ever witness a high school football game. That was exciting, I mean, for a bunch of 16, 17, 18 year olds to be in what was a fairly new stadium. And I think it was the first state championship game played there. Port Natchez Grove was a good team. That was our first time to ever play in a dome. And I think that uh, affected some of our play because uh, I think it uh, threw off the per depth perception. It took us a bit to get rolling. PNG scored a pair of touchdowns in 22 seconds to take a 14 to nothing lead in the first quarter, highlighted by a 14 yard touchdown run by junior quarterback Richie Etheridge, followed by a 38 yard TD on a fumble recovery by defensive back Jack Colazzo. The Indians forced five Panther turnovers. Permian's lone touchdown cut it to 14 10, but PNG answered 20 to 10 your final score, Indians over the Panthers. Every time we turned our head, something went wrong. Wasn't, wasn't quite right. Of all the games that I played in high school, I probably remember that one the most, the disappointment of losing and everything. Just, but I don't think they were the best team we played all year. I really don't. I think we beat teams that were better than them. Permian missed the play.